Hey guys, today we're going to look into all of the tools included in the toolbar on the left side of our interface in Affinity Photo version 2. Okay, so here I am in the software already. We're going to focus on this left side toolbar today. And the very first tool at the top, it's called View Tool, look like a little hand. And that's the most useless tool on the list. <laughs> And it's the first one. I never use it myself. Why? It's supposed to be useful, right? If we zoom in like that, and by using this little hand, we can just move the, you can say the camera around and then we don't need to zoom in and out. And that's true, but why should I do that with the tool? I want to use the tool on the image while moving around. So if I select a brush tool, for example, let's jump a little bit ahead. <laughs> All right, I got brush tool now. I don't wanna switch up and down. I just wanna, I can just press space bar and I using this pan tool, the hand tool, the view tool, while holding space bar, all right? The space bar is down all the time. If I release the space bar, I jump back to my last tool, to my brush. So I never use this tool by picking this physically from the list and I do not recommend doing that, all right? So instead of picking this first hand tool from the list, try to just press and hold spacebar on your keyboard. All right, let's move to the next one. Next one is the move tool. Important shortcut to remember V because we're going to switch the move tool very often. One reason is to move our objects. We can move objects around. We can also transform them. So I can make some changes, add rotation and all of that stuff using move tool. More than that, it's also a very safe tool. So if I stop using any other tool like brush tool or selection tool, I tend to switch to move tool because this is like a neutral tool. So I kind of switch to move tool very often if I don't wanna mess up anything by clicking somewhere with another tool by mistake. All right, tool number three is all about picking colors. So we can select that pick color from the picture. And as you can see on the right side, it's appearing here. That's our color. And nowadays we can also use the second tool hidden below called style picker tool. That's a very new addition just introduced in version two. To demonstrate the style picker tool, I will need to create something with the style. So just give me a moment. I will create a second circle and I will add some layer style to it, layer effects. So we can give it some kind of, let's say outer glow in that case. All right, so I'm adding some glow to it like that. And now if I got this object selected and I use this style picker on this one, on the right side, the pink one, I copy the style of that object. So there's a color and there's a glow of course, I can change what I want to copy. Take a look at the top. We got some checkboxes. I want to copy stroke. Yes. Fill. Yes. Let's switch off the fill. Try again. All right. So I select the object first and then I can kind of paste this style to here. And this time we did not copy a color, only the effects. So that's really handy because we can select what we want to apply to a new object. All right, so that's hidden just below the color picker. Let's get rid of those objects by pressing delete on my keyboard. I will zoom out a bit. And the next tool is a very standard crop tool where we can modify a size and crop part of the picture. We can have some standard ratios, but we can use also unstandardize and make it ourselves 100% just like that. You can even add a rotation to it. So if you hover your mouse at the corner, you can rotate the whole image while you're cropping. So that's the great way to straight up the image. If you got like, you see your, your original photo is like, turn a little bit to the left or right. You can rotate that here and straighten the image. There are a few tricks and tips here to use, but this time this video is all about a list of tools so we will not go too deep into each tool all right for that there are separate tutorials all right so that's our cropping tool and then there's a super useful tool called selection brush tool i think this is the most popular way of selecting objects in affinity photo 
version 2 and I kind of use it all the time. I do not trust any other magical selection tool. This one is good because we got the best of both worlds. We kind of controlling the selection, but same time it's snapping to contrasting colors. So it's helping us to create a selection while we still got some kind of manual control. So that's really, really good one. By the way, if you got selection like this, and you wanna deselect quickly, you can just press Command or Control D, D like deselect. All right, that's very useful. And you should always deselect if you don't need a selection because it can mess up your other tool usage. Next tool on the list, flat selection tool, also known as magic wand. As you can guess, this will try to recognize similar colors and select it as one big group. Normally it will be snapping like that. Select here or here. You can change that to add mode. So select here and here and here. So keep adding to the selection. You can also use subtract mode. We can remove stuff, all right? I'm not a big fan of this one, to be honest. All right, let's deselect this. And next thing, we got rectangle, ellipse, and freehand selection all in one group. So if you want the words, the freehand, it's here. So we can just draw selection ourselves 100% manually, all right? And of course, if you got some very squarish object, you can select them this way as well. As you can see, this big part of the tool set is just for selecting because that's half of work in Rust editing software, selecting your object. All right, what's next? Finally, something else. There's a flat tool. As you can guess, this will simply fill the selection with a desired color. So that's really straightforward. Next one is a gradient tool, same thing, but with gradient. In that case, we don't have any selection, so the gradient is applying to the whole layer or covering the original image in this case. We can, of course, change colors of our gradient. Very standard procedure and nice thing is, as you can see, I don't need to reapply the gradient again. It's already here. All right, and also when you are using the gradient tool, you kind of have a preview. You don't need to guess like in Adobe software. I don't know, maybe they fixed it already, but when I was still using Adobe software a few years back, you, the gradient was not great. So right, right here, it's much, much better. All right, let's undo those changes. I'm using Command Z, Command Z, Control Z, Control Z on Windows. All right, we are back here. And the next one is our brush tool. Brush tool will require us to select a brush from the brush list on the right. <clears throat> All right, so there's long selection of different brushes built in. We don't need to buy them or anything like that. Of course, you can expand on that, but the built-in selection is, is really nice. So just explore what is here first before you commit to spending money on additional brushes. And as you can guess, we got some brushes here. It's way more impressive if you're using some input device that can detect your pressure, right? But we can use some tricks up here. We can to fake this kind of stuff. So you can explore some options like force pressure. You can stabilize our brush tip and stuff like that. So there is something we can do here to improve on this effect already. So I got so many brush strokes I should undo now but I can use alternative method. I can go to history when I see all of my changes and I can go, go back all the way up here. And this way I can save myself clicking undo multiple times. All right, so that's the brush tool, but there's also another tool hidden just below called color replacement brush tool. This one will also use the brush tip. It's currently selected. So keep that in mind. I'll go to basic brushes because I need some basic brush for that. Let's select a color. And now if we start drawing from the color here and brushing around the program, I will be try to help us to just replace this first color I start brushing on. So as you can see, it's not touching her skin. It's only replacing the steel hair color. Uh, because the brush is helping us. If I start here now, the darker shade, it's also working similar way. 
So it's, it's really handy if you don't want to do a selection, you don't know how to do the selection, or you just simply want to save some time, you can use this curl replacement brush to recolor some smaller objects of your in your picture. So I'm going to make a separate tutorial about this method as I did not cover this tool yet in separate tutorial. So you can subscribe or like my video. So next time I post tutorial about this certain tool, you will get notified. All right. All right. That's called color replacement brush. Very useful. If you've got a small area of the picture, you want to recolor safely without selection. That's the whole trick here. And the last one is pixel tool. As you can guess, this is really tiny brush for pixel art for very sharp pixel perfect lines. All right, let's undo this and move to the next thing. Next one on the list below our brush tool is called paint mixer brush. So this is also kind of brush, but this time instead of applying the new layer of paint, we kind of mixing what is already there. Take a look. That's this original color. So that's for digital art. Very handy for digital art. We can mix original colors into nice composition, give it a little bit of texture and stuff like that. So that's the color mixing brush. Very handy if you are a digital artist. Just below that, erase the brush. Very standard use. Simply removing pixels. Removing pixels. So that's also kind of a special brush, removing pixels. We got hole in this image, so that's not ideal. Keep that in mind. There's a separate version of this brush called background eraser tool. This, there's a whole separate tutorial about that when I'm using this background eraser tool to replace a sky. The trick is it can re remove background and maintain your main object. Take a look. I get rid of this blue color here, but her skin is still intact without any selection. So again, very handy and then a separate tutorial about how to use this tool to replace the sky in your image so we can check that out and the last one is flat eraser tool as you can guess this kind of tool will erase a similar colors like that there's a tolerance slider over here i'm not big fan of this kind of tools so i will just undo all the way back here okay What's next? A very standard set, dodge, burn, and sponge. Below that, there is a clone brush tool. Keep in mind, before you start using cloning brush, you need to give it a source. So in case on Mac, I hold option. I think it's Alt or Windows, and then I give it a source. You see this little cross on her skin here? That's the source of my cloning brush. And now if I start cloning, the source is moving, so that's mostly used, as you can guess, that's mostly used for retouching, covering the skin with a similar, similar texture and stuff like that. So that's the cloning brush. Below that we got undo brush. That will be handy to undo some changes We're using brush this time and not the history panel. So we're only working in this area of the brush while we're doing this undo operation. That's interesting too. Then there's a blur tool. If you don't want to blur the whole image, just smaller area, sharpen, median and smudge. So that's the kind of standard set. And we're moving to the healing brushes. So there's a healing brush tool, similar to cloning tool, some say. And below that there's patch tool when we kind of select a area with the patch tool and then we search for replacement around and then commit to that new replacement by double clicking. All right. So this is interesting if you got like uh, something in your backdrop, like there is a balloon on the sky or somebody in the water behind you. Very good one to remove a bigger object. If the backdrop is simple enough, like water, sky, grass, then there's a blemish removal tool. That's your first tool you should try to use if you've got some kind of skin imperfections or dirt in your image then you can use that to quickly manipulate on those little imperfections. All right. And what's what's next in painting brush tool. That's a most powerful tool in this little set of healing tools. In my personal opinion, this one can help you out to get rid of all the noises and imperfections as well. And this time we kind of like painting in this red color to select the area release. 
and the program will try to figure it out what should be here. You may know this method with the name of a content aware field, right? So this is like content aware field, but in the brush tip. So it's, you got really a lot of control. You don't need to make a selection for each one. Take a look. Gone, gone. Very nice. It's called in painting brush tool. There's a whole tutorial about this guy as well. And finally, the last one for removing red eyes. Simple enough. We are moving into the lower section of the tool panel. And there is a pen tool, node tool, and there are vector tools. So I will not explain them in a great detail because I brag about vector tools in this YouTube channel all the time. So I don't want to bother you too much. You can check the previous video when I cover all the vector tools in Affinity Designer for more information about your vector tools. As you can see, vector tools like pen tool or node tool to modify vectors existing vectors. Now I modify what I draw. Take a look. Very nice. You can drag the line as well. So those vector tools are available in within Affinity Photo without any additional purchase. You can use them without using designer. And there's a proper shape tool as well. Keep in mind, shape tool in Affinity software is really powerful. We got those additional orange points to control our shapes and modify them. Quickly, I turn this star into flower in seconds. All right, so don't forget that there's a proper shape tool for you. You don't need to search for icons. Maybe you can just draw them really quickly using this built in shape tool. Below that, a standard artistic text frame and a long text frame for typing stuff, adding typography elements to your design is enough. And finally, the last thing on the list here, if you ignore the zoom tool, it's a mesh. And this is a little bit different mesh than the one introduced in designer. This is a mesh tool that will modify the existing image in the raster base. And actually that's not the best way of doing that. Now with update to version two, there is a, a live filter mesh. It's much, much better. I will cover that in the video about live filters. This one is the one from the tool panel, the one from the old version of the program, version one. It's much better one, it's hidden here. If you go to layers, there's a whole selection of live filters here. And there is also one about warping your image. Take a look, mesh warp. That's really similar, but it's non-destructive. It's much better in this way. All right, let's finish with that. And below it, there's a zoom tool. Again, one of the useless tools. I never use a zoom tool from the tool list. What I do is I use my shortcuts, comment plus to zoom in, comment minus to zoom out, comment zero, zoom to fit the screen size. Of course, on Windows it's control plus, control minus. It's also a navigator tool. If you're not confident with shortcuts, you can use that slider as well without switching between tools. Every time you select zoom tool, you are deselecting your current tool. That's the thing I don't want to do. All right, below that we got foreground color, background color, and that's our tool panel on the left. Of course, there is more to it. There are some other tools hidden in different personas. There's also Live filter on the right I showed you before and uh, different options. So keep your eyes peeled for more tutorials explaining other features of this great software. All right. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel so you will get some notification about my Affinity Photo tutorials. And I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.